soccer universe. The best team on the night does not always win. That's my takeaway from today. But um, I watched today both semifinals uh, via the goal zone uh, with a, almost a 20 minute delay. So I'm kind of doing this right after finishing watching. I took notes uh, where I could, but honestly, it is really hard to get a good feel. I got a pretty good feel, I think, for Frankfurt Chelsea because this is where they put the emphasis on. Of course, it's a German feed so of course they will put the uh, emphasis on the German game but you know Arsenal Valencia more in the first half than in the second half so let's go um, where shall I go first maybe let's do Arsenal Valencia because it will take me a little bit less time but it was ac ac actually the more exciting game with more goals of course scored um, by the way I'm wearing Chelsea, the same reason why I was wearing it at my prediction. And yeah, they didn't lose, but they really, really played well. And we'll talk about that. Uh, the setup there, same as before. Instead of Frankfurt after Germany shirt, everything else is home shirts. And yes, I know I need probably an Arsenal away shirt and Stralentia, blah, 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 blah. We'll see. My first note for Arsenal Valencia is uh, Valencia always beat Arsenal in Europe. Similar thing between Liverpool and Barcelona. Liverpool always beat Barcelona so far. Just have that in mind. Because um, both games look like it's going to go the other way. Uh, also, they, were, they showed somehow uh, the Arsenal mascot uh, welcoming the players. What is the Arsenal mascot? Is this a kind of a dragon dinosaur and why? What the WTF? Um, jersey matchup, Arsenal in the home jerseys. I was quickly wondering what Valencia will play, and then, uh, of course, they play in their navy ones. Though I would love them to play in this one. Absolutely would love them to play in this one. Uh, from what I saw, um, Valencia had a really good start. Uh, first 50 minutes, there was like a tricky situation. Uh, right off bat where uh, two players pressed high and uh, needed to be resolved. There was a free kick by Parejo, um, uh, which then led to a great chance uh, to, um, by Garay. Free kick goes out to um, Rodrigo, who puts it in. Garay actually needs to make this one. Um, but also you could see that they're sitting deep. I mean, it was almost a 5-3-2. I think they were probably playing a 4-4-2, but at the, uh, for a moment it seemed like they have five on the back. But still, uh, they were very dangerous on the counter, and they actually get it after a corner, uh, the, which goes to, uh, to the long post. Header on the other side, and Diakabi makes it 1-0. Uh, in the 11th minute already and Arsenal was passive and really not there in the game honestly and you had to fear the worst especially the way the last weeks have been going um, two minutes later another huge chance by Valencia which was mishandled by Jack I mean Jack had it uh, put it to the Valencia player they cannot hit it home I was really fearing for Arsenal but they quickly got back Özil recovered the ball, pulled it to Lacazette, who made a really nice and steep pass to uh, Aubameyang, who runs down, and Lacazette keeps on tracking, and the play was on the left side. Uh, Lacazette like, like runs, runs, runs towards the center. Uh, everyone is concentrating on Aubameyang, of course. And so Lacazette gets the ball from Aubameyang, who can put it into the empty net. That was quick, seven minutes later. I really thought that Valencia is going to destroy Arsenal. Then it happened almost the other way because uh, six minutes later, it's 2-1. Uh, it was a great header by La Cassette. Uh, Neto had his hand on there, pulled it against the post, but it went in from there and couldn't get it out anymore. Um, but kind of poor defending because uh, both defenders were at Aubameyang and La Cassette. When the ball comes, when, when when the ball comes in, and both losing are losing their strikers, and at that moment, Arsenal became more uh, dominant, and I was really waiting for a response, but it didn't um, come. 
quickly on the kit, I was it's curious to me that Arsenal is using the 2016 font by Puma, by the way. Um, other than that, the game was hectic. Arsenal probably slightly better in the end, but uh, Valencia had the good start. But um, and the more my main takeaway was that both defenses did not have a good game. Uh, both committed errors, and yeah, Arsenal uh, clawed itself back into. If they wouldn't have gotten the equalizer, I really think that Arsenal. This was very timely. Arsenal would have had a hard, tough time. At halftime, shots were 6-7 in favor of Valencia, but 3-2 on goal in favor of Arsenal. 3-1 uh, corners for Arsenal as well. And uh, possession was mainly with Arsenal, which is also not that surprising. Second half, I have a, a quite less here. Um, it started out with a nice attack by Valencia. Uh, deflected shot by Soler, but um, on the other side, whenever Arsenal had the ball, they looked quite secure. Um, there were interesting uh, chances where, you know, like I said, the game gets free in the 63rd on the cross into, in, into the box, but um, cannot get to the ball to head it in. Um, then another great chance uh, where um, Neto saves and, like I said, um, goes to the near post, cannot get it. It was really then pressure on and possession got 61% Arsenal um, as compared to 58%. So really Arsenal then uh, put Valencia on the back foot. Um, Özil, who had I think a decent game, came off. Again, I cannot say much. Mkhitaryan uh, came on. Uh, some nice moves. The game got a little bit more open, but I didn't really see the big chances. Uh, from uh, Valencia coming and then Neto makes actually a really great save. There was a ball from Mkhitaryan that got blocked. Uh, a ball comes to Lacazette like, like who really takes aim to the uh, corner. It is saved by Neto but then a uh, ball comes to Kolasinac in the same attacking move. Head has it in Aubameyang on the, is standing at the near near post and slots it home. 3-1 deserved win and seems like the I mean the one away goal is in favor of Valencia but 3-1 this seems like Arsenal's control Valencia did not have a good game um, Arsenal controls the tie at the end still surprising 20 to 15 shots for Valencia I didn't see most of them to be honest uh, but 6-3 on goal for Arsenal it's that Ar Arsenal was the more dangerous team 6-4 corners 58% uh, possession in the end um, for challenges uh, Valencia was slightly better with winning 55% let's go to the other game Frankfurt Chelsea um, Ball, uh, Frankfurt played in their home jersey, Chelsea in their away jersey, so black against yellow, almost uh, like Dortmund. And the whole season, I remember Frankfurt as a black and red team, and I read up a little bit on that, that Frankfurt kind of chooses somewhere between black and red, and red, uh, uh, and black and white, and at the moment they're going full for the black and white identity. Um, Frankfurt was the result of a merger uh, between two teams, one playing red and white, Frankfurt's uh, city colors, one playing black and white. So they go the one with red and black, but now they, they are black and white. Not, I don't mind black and white, but for me, Frankfurt, there still should be some red in there, and I hate those jerseys. I don't hate Frankfurt, though. They probably have the best atmosphere. The fans of Frankfurt are really amazing, and I didn't even know that they're so crazy. Um, Ahead of the game, during the game, they are never, they're always behind and make it and almost, you know, fanatics, true fanatics. I think that's the best way to put it. Um, this was also Frankfurt's first semi final, final European condition since 1980, when they won it all. There was uh, four. There were four teams in the um, uh, semi-final of the UEFA Cup back then, the precursor of the Europa League, and Frankfurt beat in the final against Gladbach, uh, won it all. And uh, as for Chelsea, they played without Azar and Iguain. Iguain didn't even come on. 
I have to. I have made a note about the team photo. I, there's a whole rant that I don't want to waste time on now. I just don't like how team photos are taking these days, where the front row is not really kneeling; they're more or less standing, and so I don't like it. That will be a rant for another time. Uh, Chelsea was always had always more of the initiative in that entire game. Um, at the beginning, Frankfurt could get the occasional pressure, but they really needed to claw itself in uh, into the game. Um, and it seemed a little bit random. You know, with the high press, you always try to get the ball and quickly move along. This was uh, the game at the beginning, but Chelsea seemed so much more secure on the ball. Um, the one player that really... Uh, got me for Frankfurt was Da Costa, who actually won a lot of balls, um, but then Chelsea couldn't make too much out of it. Uh, but one thing you can say, Chelsea was the better team even at the beginning, but um, a lot of physicality and a lot of spirit on Frankfurt's side, who clawed themselves. I mean, Chelsea was better, but Frankfurt got into it and could put sometimes a little bit pressure or ran a counter-attack against Chelsea and actually took the lead through Jovic. Which, um, there was a great cross by Kostic and a great header that was really hard to defend. I mean, he's kind of free in the box but more towards the edge and puts the header right in the corner. I don't think Kepa can do much about that one. Um, and Stadium, of course, gets uh, crazy. Who won the ball? Uh, for um, that attacking move, it was of course Da Costa. I said he he had had really a great game. After that, I made a note: Sarri is a lot like me. He's writing a lot, and I was right writing a lot. I mean, my first half sheets for both games is quite full. The second half, not so much, especially on the Arsenal side here because they didn't show that much. Also, the pen uh, lost. There was. Of course, Chelsea came back, came back storming. There was a nice shot by Pedro who got close. Uh, there was potentially a handball at first, but then you saw it was outside. There's, of course, no VAR, which is a whole other um, uh, issue. And then Chelsea just kept pressing and pressing and pressing. And then mainly about of Loftus-Cheek, who had... Uh, shot block, he had another good shot that went wide. William dribbles through the Frankfurt defense, um, but doesn't get. You were actually thinking, I mean, they, uh, the comp can say, we really hope that there's soon um, the break. And now Pedro, after a corner and a left Loftus cheek assist, who I think was the best player for Chelsea uh, today, makes it 1 1 in the 45th minute. Fully, fully, fully deserved. Uh, there was one small chance where um, Gacinovic almost had a, a, lo a run on to, on to the goalie by himself, but was somehow saved. Um, statistics, four, seven shots in favor of Chelsea, but only one shot on goal each, so very efficient. Seven to corners and 65% uh, possession, all in favor of Chelsea. And it continued that way. You know, after the break, you kind of a little bit feeling it out. And then it was attack after attack after attack, uh, right from the get-go. Right from the get-go. Uh, the, I have wrote for 46 minutes, oops, Frankfurt, almost missed the ball, almost would have hand, 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 hand it to um, Chelsea. Uh, in the 49th minute, Rode and Jorginho call, uh, crashed. Rode didn't need any stitches over there, but Jorginho got a uh, uh, head uh, bandage, which didn't affect any player, all a continued player. And then Another run by Loftus Cheek, pays out to Pedro, comes back, shoots, is wide. I think Loftus Cheek was for me the best player. I mean, at least the one that I got most. Uh, shot William, Dal, great free kick by David Luiz, uh, who hits the bar. Reminded me when he had that position, I was thinking uh, quarterfinal 2014 against Colombia. After he scored that goal, that was when the Brazil mania was the highest in the Neymar 
gets injured and everything falls apart. Um, and I'm writing here, Chelsea, definitely better. Azar comes in for uh, a villain. Only a matter of time for Chelsea to score. How long can Frankfurt keep it together? It seemed really that Frankfurt is falling apart. The pressure was intense for about 25 minutes from the 50th right up until the 75. It was immense pressure, Chelsea. Uh, Frankfurt could just kick balls away. Uh, Hinteregger actually was kind of the tower on, on the back, but they could barely hold on to the ball. Um, it was really amazing how Chelsea did not score on that. Uh, but then in the last 10 minutes, I mean, Paciencia came on uh, for Frankfurt and suddenly, and also Loftus-Cheek came off and Kovacic, born and raised in Linz at Lusk, best player that Lusk ever had without playing for the senior team, uh, came on and suddenly Frankfurt actually came back into the game and could have had a winner after a corner kick through Abraham who had a free header. This has to be in there, honestly. But so Chelsea. Um, well, last note, I thought that the referee swallowed the whistle quite a lot. I think he should probably have given some more fouls than he actually did. But my overall th thought of the game is how did Chelsea not win this game? Uh, going into Stamford Bridge, maybe the 1 1 is not that bad of a result for them because going into Stamford Bridge, um, they need to get a result. I mean, no, they actually, they are 0 0, but I think they will go for a result. And I, yeah, they gotta convert, take this game seriously. It was over, overall, I thought it was a great performance by Chelsea, except for goals. Except for goals at well. Statistics uh, 16 5 shots for Chelsea, 5 1 on goal, uh, 11 corners to 4 of Frankfurt, and 64% of the ball. Uh, Frankfurt only had the fight. I mean, amazing fighting spirit, amazing fans. Even after the game, they were chanting for this team. This was the last uh, game in the Europa League that, that will be played there. Um, to be honest, I didn't expect too much from Frankfurt in the Europa League, but they have been consistent. Both of these teams have been actually uh, playing above their level in the Europa League. And their fans, I know the German fans can be great, but the Frankfurt fans are absolutely uh, in a different league to me. I mean, Frankfurt, um, Dortmund and Schalke fans are known for their passion, that they travel everywhere, uh, but not to this crazy degree as Frankfurt. I mean, they had 2,500 in Donetsk. I mean, had a whole sector there. Um, I know it's not always pretty with them, but I'm quite amazed by their numbers, their support, unwavering and just behind the team. I mean, this they know that this is the time of their lives at the moment. But yeah. Overall, looking at the results, it really looks like a London final in Baku. The Reds against the Blues. The Gunners against the Blues. The Reds are, of course, the Liverpool. But a red, red, red versus Blue final would be fun to watch. Um, and for some reason, I know Chelsea is the overall favorite, but if they would have to play Arsenal in the final, I have this gut feeling that Arsenal might take it from them. But you know, let's not get ahead of ourselves. There's a game at the Mestaya, there's a game at Stamford Bridge. Uh, Frankfurt has already once shown when they played Inter, um, where they only got the draw at home, that they can win on the road as well. And, you know, the Mestaya is not the quietest stadium of them all. This can be a very intimidating atmosphere, as long as it's not raining, because it was a dreary scene at the return leg at Sviria. Well, let me know what you thought about these games. Um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things my soccer universe. 
And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.